Welcome to the Stray Red Card. Today on the show, uh, we have a member of the Section 8 for the Chicago Fire, longtime uh, friend, at least online, uh, Ruben Hussman. Ruben, how are things in Chicago land? Things are doing very well up here. How are you guys? Uh, well, good. yeah, we're not doing too bad, you know. Um, nice and uh, nice and fifty-five degrees today here in Indy. Oh yeah, yeah you got you got about twenty degrees on us. So. It's yeah, a heat wave, huh? I went out <laughs> sun tanning today. Yeah, yeah, I was out sun tanning, had the lotion, sunglasses, everything. This is um, swimming weather. I, I bet you're getting some strange looks then. In that case, <laughs> I always get strange looks, especially when I walk around the uh, neighborhood half naked. But um, that's okay. That's okay. People yell things like bear and, uh, you know, <laughs> caveman. But uh, that's okay. I'm used to that now, and, and they're, they're getting used to me too, uh, Ruben. But uh, I want to welcome you to the show because we've known you for a long time. And I think what's unfair about this whole interview, for me at least, is that Brett is a well-known Chicago Fire um, fan. I was going to use another term, but I'm going to say fan. And then you are as well. So really it's kind of two against one today. Yeah, two two uh Two are a little bit more wise than the other one, so you're the odd man out. But that's wow. fine. We'll, we'll talk to you anyway. <laughs> well, gosh darn it! I'm the host. Well, I'm one of the hosts, right? So I have to be somewhat wise. But all right, let's say I'm not wise. So let's jump into this and see how unwise I can be, because I'm going to really play kind of a devil's advocate role today, um, because I know both of you guys think that the, the fire are going to make the playoffs, and you know there's going to be jubilation well, and 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 you know, uh, uh, champagne bottles, and, and you're going to make That was the our final. expectations of last season. Mm-hmm. All this right. This yeah, season, it's, it's much more of a question mark for us. What? what? Yeah, absolutely. And that's, that's what I was going to say is I think last year when you, you looked at us on paper and uh, kind of the, the tradition of a lot of these individual players, um, there was really no doubt in my mind that we would be fighting for the uh, supporter shield and, and, and pushing on for, you know, an MLS Cup and, and so forth. But, uh, yeah, it, it really didn't work out that way. I mean, there were so many gaps in performances, and it was just really awful a year that I, I really can't see as being any anywhere near as bad as last year. It was it was a huge disappointment. All right. Well, what made last year so awful, and then what new signings so far this off season make you think that it's going to be a big difference? Well, I think one of the one of the biggest things about last year was. Um, I think there were some really good, talented individual players, but it just seemed to take forever for the team to build an identity. And I can't really chalk it up to one thing or the other because I think there were some good players that just didn't fit into the system very well. Mm-hmm. And so with a lot of the, the turnover that you saw this, this past year, um, what, we're, what we're seeing is some players that seem to fit under Carlos de los Colos' scheme a little bit better. And whether that's the, the right thing or the wrong thing, uh, he is the coach, and, and, and as the you know, as, as the manager, you, you've got to make sure that the players are there to, to fit that scheme. So um, I, I do see that there's been a, a shift towards kind of some name players, some people with you know, pedigree, like the, the Christoph Krolls, who uh, you know, came up through Real Madrid and their, their youth program and uh, you know some other players, Collins John, for example, had a, a you know a solid year or two in in uh, the Premiership with Fulham, um, and and what we're seeing is some players that are just really solid all around soccer players. Um, you know, middle of the year last year we had Bratislav Ristic mm-hmm. come in, and and I thought he was fantastic. Uh, too bad we only had him for half a year, but you you could really slot him in to probably four or five separate different mm-hmm. positions, and he'd be able to perform very well every every single match. So yeah. I see a lot more of that uh, type of, um, you know, with, with Klopas and, and De Los Cobos going after those types of players. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I think that, that the scheme that, that De Los Cobos runs, um, it is those types of players that we need to, to be looking at, and, you know, not only with an MLS, but specifically uh, with the fire, because, um, you know, we, we still have a, a pretty solid core of players. Uh, we did lose a whole lot, but, you know, I think the the ones that are coming in are gonna gonna do well. And I think I think the big thing is um, uh, De Los Cobos came in, and I, I might get some heat for this, but De Los Cobos came in wanting to make orange juice, but he was handed a bag of apples. Mm-hmm. 
the team the team itself under any other MLS coach probably could have done really well. The style that De Los Cobos wanted to play, it just didn't suit. You really mm-hmm. didn't. I mean, it wasn't. It just wasn't going to work, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, and we saw that. We saw, uh, like you said, a lot of turnover. A lot of players leave, retire, trade, uh, just losing in general. Um, and I think I think the players that we really picked up is what's going to make the difference. Although uh, it's going to make the difference on the style of play, whether or not it actually works in MLS, we'll have to see. But you know, you had Gaston, you had Chavez, um, you already mentioned Ristich. Uh, it's, these are players who are, you know, very fluent with the game. They have a knowledge. They uh, a very a very Latino style, I guess you could say. I, even well, though, well, even he, though uh, Ristich isn't from a Latino well, nation, well, but still, yeah, Ristich isn't. But either yeah. is um, Mukulich, um, Marich, um, well, and you're, you're, talk, you're talking you're talking about a defender, and you're talking about a midfielder that's really going to be uh, competing with uh, Logan Paws. Uh, as far as the positional, uh, the position that they're going to play. I thought I named uh, three I, I midfielders there, though. I, I named uh, three midfielders: Husidic, Ristic, and uh, Marich. All midfielders. How are they? How are they going to blend? And, and maybe we should let Ruben answer this first. With guys like Gaston uh, Parari from Uruguay, you have two new Uruguayans, and, and and Diego Chavez as well, or Chavez. I don't know how you pronounce that, but. Um, yep. mm-hmm. Yeah. How, how does how do those? I mean, those seem like uh, not necessarily contrary styles, um, but it, it does seem a little bit different. I mean, South American ball is a little bit different than uh, Eastern European ball. Or am I wrong? No, no. You're, you, I, I believe you're absolutely right. I think that there are some particular styles that that uh, you know do dictate how how the players are used to playing. But I think the the thing that I kind of noticed in last year is that what was really missing was just kind of an overall quality. You know, if if if, mm-hmm. if I had to point out the, the player last year, the, the couple players last year who I felt had some pretty consistent games, it would have been Freddie Lundberg mm-hmm. and it would have been Bratislav Ristich. And I think the, the reason why I point those two guys out is they seem to be able to, to kind of float around the, the field a bit and, and still be able to be a threat offensively kind of handle their space well. And I think what you're going to see with bringing in some of these guys from the former Yugoslavian bloc as well as um, you know, the two Uruguayans is that their overall quality is going to be a little bit better than what we're used to. Mm-hmm. And I, I think with De Los Cobos' scheme, you know, he's going to be playing five midfielders. Very likely two of those five guys are going to be very defensive-minded. Um, at least one of them will, because with the three line, you know, the the three man back line, they're going to at least need one guy to really hang back. But at the same time, if you've got some some players with some some good overall quality, some plays on the ball, um, a decent amount of vision, they're not going to be too afraid to push forward. And, and that the same can be said with the the two Uruguayan kind of attacking players mm-hmm. uh, who, who tend to play that that top two spot. Um, you know the, the striker positions, and the, the, uh, they're they're going to be able to come right back into midfield and really help break up things on defense as well. Mm-hmm. And and that's what I noticed about De Los Cobos is he seemed to run kind of a short field. Mm-hmm. Uh, long gone are the days of the fire where we're relying on really spreading out the, the the field and you know bombing it down. You know from Sean Johnson, you know along the back line. I think mm-hmm. it's going to be a lot more controlled. Pace and, and really utilizing uh, a lot of the short passing game. I'm, I'm not saying that it's, it's the best way, but that just seems to be his style. Mm-hmm. A couple things added to that. Uh, first, uh, Husidic wouldn't really necessarily mention that he's a uh, Eastern European style player because he is very Americanized as far as his style. That's true. Um, he's been here for a while. He understands the game. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily lump him in the same uh, bat. But he's still kind of a, a tougher guy. Type oh, of I, don't dis- I don't disagree with that mm-hmm. at all. And then one thing mm-hmm. is, I think, uh, well, I think the Fires really lack that uh, that bite player since uh, since Armist has really left. Because I mean, Paws is, I mean, I-, I love what he does to the team, but he's not really that type of a player. Uh, I mean, he's very much quiet version of Chris. Yeah. But, um, yeah. What what uh what Gaston and Chavez will bring is like like you mentioned, Ruben. They will. Bring, they will uh, check back into the midfield, open up the space where I really think uh, we're going to see uh, Marco and uh, Niarco 
be utilized more on the wings or even wrist stitch for this matter because it's going to open up space on the attack for the flanks to really get up into the attack. And we saw it a lot last year. That's why we saw, you know, Niarco as the leading assister and um, we saw Marco as the leading goal scorer. It's, the right. style of play is really going to open up the field for them to make the runs up because that's where their speed yeah, and their technical ability is really going to take into effect. And I, I agree because I, I think that, that out of the, the, those two players that you mentioned with Papa and Yarko, the, the one thing that I noticed is that right side of the attacking field for, for Chicago was always uh, was always a threat, but there, that was it. I mean, until Lundberg came you know, halfway through the season, that's all that Chicago had in terms of a, a threat. I mean, I, don't get me wrong, I, I love Brian McBride, but you know he just did not fit into that, that system last year, and it was a shame that he had to retire under those circumstances, but it just it just wasn't a great fit. Same thing can be said with, you know, Collins John, who's more of a, a target type of forward who's going to be playing and pushing forward and keeping defenses honest, but that's not the style that they, they play under, you know, De Los Gobos. And so, you know, ho- hopefully, um, you know, some of these additions will be able to spread the field out and, as you say, open things up for, for some outside play and, and to allow, you know, Niarco, who's, who's got some fantastic speed and, and good skill on taking defenders on, uh, to do his thing, and, and other people will step up and and uh, be able to fill in those uh, those other slots. Yeah, I mean, there seemed to be sort of a contradiction between what uh, management wanted and, of course, the player signings last season, number one. But number two, my question is, uh, why not try harder to keep uh, Freddie Lundberg? I, unless he was Mr. Grumpy Pants with you guys, too, last year, why not keep him on? And uh, he, he seems to still have... A lot of gusto still had, still seemed to be able to play pretty well. Uh, why not keep him on as a DP? Well, I, I'd love to be able to tell you that I, I talk to Freddie Longberg all the time, but uh, it's just not <laughs> the case. You know, he doesn't return my phone calls, unfortunately, and I, I think he actually switched his number since he moved to Scotland. But um, you know, he, it, I, I don't know exactly all what that went down. It, there, there were a lot of kind of odd things that happened immediately after the season that uh, some players that, that people seem to be you know fairly happy with or at least expected to, to be around and, and they're gone. Um, you know, I, I know I was a little upset when uh, Wilman Conde left, though I guess the writing was kind of on the wall for him and um, you know th- th- there were there were a few few instances like that. What I can tell you though is Chicago did did really did it, did try to uh, go out last summer and and make some slashes with a couple of EP signings and um, I, I hate to say his name but Neri Castillo was just um, I, I'll tell you the the my reaction to the Neri Castillo signing was much like my reaction when I heard that Billy Ray Cyrus's daughter is making pop music I really <laughs> just didn't care at all for that signing and and it I hate to say I told you so but I, I just kind of knew it wasn't going to really work out very well yeah. Um, you know, it, the other the other thing is, you know, we did get a little bit of insight and in, in how things run from a front office standpoint last week when uh, Julian Posada came out and, and spoke with uh, Section Eight at their board meeting, and uh, it was fantastic because he spent a couple hours with, uh, uh, you know, with a group of about forty of us and and was there to answer questions and really give good insight on on what's truly involved from the business side and, and the standpoint. And, um, I, I, for one, I can speak for myself, really, I uh, feel like he does a great job of, you know, focusing in on the bottom line and, and a lot of those things and, and really setting up so that the team can really focus on their jobs. Um, if that means that, you know, some, some word came from above that we really can't be affording a DP right now, especially without a, uh, a jersey sponsor, then, you know, maybe that's why they didn't go after, you know, Freddie, but... Um, it, it's really hard to say. It's really hard to say. 